Hi guys and welcome for this new episode of Eat the Blocks and today I will interview a special guest is my friend Angus uh, who is a programmer with a lot of experience and recently he got into uh, blockchain and I wanted to interview him to understand better uh, what are his motivation and, and what he's been working on lately so so hi Angus <laughs> Hey Julian, hey. good to be uh, on Eat the Blocks how are you doing? Yeah, doing great. Doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm great too. So, uh, so c can you briefly uh, introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, my name's Angus. Uh, I started out as a kind of um, game. I for a long time I worked for myself producing uh, Xbox Live and then mobile. Um, game and then I kind of to mobile apps and then you know web front end and um, and one project worked on a bunch of projects for myself but one project that really stands out something called Girlfriend Plus which is kind of a fake girlfriend app so recently I've the court world but in the last three months you know partially thanks to Julian and partially thanks to all the hype I've been um very interested in blockchain tech, with decentralized applications on, you know, um, blockchains like Ethereum and uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. That's that, that's really cool. Yeah. So like, I mean, you already have a lot of experience, and you're not only an, uh, a programmer, but but you're also an entrepreneur because you already did some mobile game that that had a lot of success. So. So now, yeah, probably you're very excited about the, the, this new platform, which is blockchain, because maybe you think that you can also pull it off with maybe like a, like a blockchain game or, or something like this. So, so like, so, so you mentioned you started to be interested in, in crypto a couple of months ago, and and I'm I'm sure like probably like many people, the fact that the price was going up was was probably attractive. But but I'm sure I'm sure you also have other motivations. So like. What, what what do you think like compared to mobile like it, it, it can be a great platform for a developing app yeah I mean thing is um, price I mean you know currently price price is probably what has made um, it's, you know blockchain technology exciting um, you know when you hear about the price going up you kind of think oh maybe I should get in on this maybe I should buy from this when you're saying all this buzz about Bitcoin and Ethereum prices, I didn't even know that you could build applications on Ethereum or EOS or whatever, you know, blockchain. Uh, it wasn't until a friend of mine, you know, said, hey, have you heard of these things called DAPs, D-A-P-P-S? And I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and research and I listened to it. And I thought, this is, the crazy thing was I, I looked at a tutorial online and I thought, um, like, the way you interact with all this stuff is very different from how you might make a web application and um, there was just a lot of interesting concepts to learn so when I, I got into the, you know how it works uh, even to this day I don't really think I have a great idea for what would make an application and what's a good business model for a decentralized application but you know it's, it's all very interesting it's all very new so I just kind of wanted to try it out uh, okay so um, so so it's it's very new. You wanted to try it out, and actually, recently you you went to a hackathon, right? Yeah, that's right. Recently, I went to a, um, a hackathon hosted by uh, EOS, which I think is you know one of the blockchain one of the blockchain technologies that builds up a lot of attention lately. Yeah. So 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 br briefly. Um, so for, for people who don't know what is EOS, so EOS is another blockchain, uh, which is one of the competitors of Ethereum. Uh, it's built by um, someone called Dan Larimer, who is also the person who built uh, Steemit, which is the most popular decentralized application. So it's basically like Medium, but uh, on, on the blockchain. And, and under the hood, I think that Steemit also used the EOS technology. And so with EOS, you can build a smart contract like Ethereum. Um, but EOS compared to, to Ethereum is, uh, is, 
it's a little bit more new and, and not as popular but so th that was just for for people who don't know about eos but yeah so maybe you can continue to, to talk about the the eos uh, icathon yeah i mean um uh, I, I didn't know too much about eos until um the, the hackathon really or maybe a week before the hackathon i kind of know more about it um the hackathon was you know very interesting because um Normally, in hackathons, the prizes are you know not that interesting. I, I remember I applied to one hackathon, and the first place prize was like like a free lunch at a hotel or something. <laughs> it's like it's like four hundred bucks, basically four hundred Hong Kong dollars, which is like U.S. dollars, and you spend the whole weekend programming something. That's a bit of a ripoff. But um, the EOS hackathon had a huge prize list for I think they had like two hundred thousand U.S. dollars worth of prizes. Um, so that was that that kind of drew me into it. And, and the other thing was, you know, I don't know anything about blockchain and hackathons are a really good way to learn a new technology. Um, so I, I signed up for the hackathon and, and when I turned up, um, you know, I formed a team. I didn't have any friends that were interested in going to the hackathon with me. It's kind of a big commitment, you know. You work like Monday, Sunday, Sunday you, you go and you go into a room and you don't sleep for the whole weekend. You just code the whole time. Wow! Um, so I formed the team. What? What? what the sorry. Thing sorry. Was what, they, what, they talk. Sorry. Yeah. What, where did you find the team? I, I met the team at the hackathon. So I was um, before the hackathon started. I was just walking around talking to people. Oh, so, 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 said, so, you know, so, 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 so basically, you don't need to know people before. You can just uh, walk in. You register and and you find your your team there. Yeah, you can do that. I think a lot of people like to go with it to probably improve your chances of winning. But my goal for the hackathon was not to win a prize. I didn't think it was realistic because I don't I don't really know much about blockchain technology. My goal is how to write these smart contracts and learn a bit more about EOS. So so I just walked in, um, talked to some people. Care who? <laughs> the only the only thing I wanted was to work with a team of programmers. Um, that that was all I needed. So I met programmers, and, and then you know immediately we had to start thinking of what would be, you know, what kind of application we're going to make. And like apps, um, decentralized apps are basically just web apps, right? And there's nothing there's nothing you can create as a web as a decentralized app. Maybe it doesn't fit the business model or whatever, but you can always do it. It might be like, there's, potentially there's no benefit of uh, Potentially you could create a decentralized app that really doesn't benefit from being on the blockchain. Do it. So we had to kind of think, what are we going to make um, and what's suitable for blockchain? And really, I didn't really know what well, what um, application would be good for the blockchain at all. So we came up with some idea. Um, it was actually a Starbucks loyalty sort of application. So it was a backend for other people to create loyalty programs on and store their loyalty data on the blockchain. Um, potentially good for a blockchain, potentially not, I don't really know. Um, yeah, and, and the great thing was at, that, at the EOS hackathon, you know, it was a huge venue. There was, you know, like food provided. There were sessions as well, teaching you how to write, how to interact with the uh, smart contracts on the front end. They taught you how to write the smart contracts in C++. They taught you how to set up the develop, development environment. And they even had a workshop teaching you how to do um, pitch presentations. So they'd tell you, you know, when you're when you're when you've got like a six-minute pitch, how do you memorize it? You know, and, and one, you know. And how's a good way to present it, you know? Um, so it was a really fun experience. Um, another great thing was the people, they were really great helpers at the event. Let's say you're trying to write a smart contract and you run into some issue, which is very likely because um, the, it's just a little bit difficult. Right? Even setting up yeah. with a difficult. And so what you could do was you could jump into the Slack channel and say, Hey, I'm I'm stuck, and then some guy would come over and help you with. Um, and then, the interesting thing is, 
I remember I, you know, when on, I had some problem with my dev environment, I sent some messages to like him. He helped me sort it out, and then he went off. And then later, I was searching a problem on Stack Overflow or GitHub or something, and I saw the guy that came over to talk to the guy who's answering questions on Stack Overflow. And then I looked into it further, and he's like the guy who wrote the SDK for like EOS. <laughs> so it's, it's really cool to interact with people that are like, you know, basically writing the code for, for these, um, for EOS. Um, so it's a good, a great place to learn and a great place to network as well. And uh, and I'm really curious. Uh, so, what kind of technology did you use to write the smart contract? Oh yeah, sure. So, um, EOS for some reason. So EOS, um, the blockchain runs on WebAssembly, right? So, the EOS nodes you deploy WebAssembly to EOS, but you don't write WebAssembly because it's just bytecode. It feel a little bit crazy, but it's probably not very easy. Um, what they suggest you do is you write C++ and then transpile it over the web list. So it's kind of like in Ethereum where you'll write Solidity and that will be transpiled to, uh, I think, Ethereum bytecode or whatever it is. Okay, so, so, um, so, so, uh, and the interesting thing was a lot of people... So, so, sorry, so, sorry to cut you. Just a quick question. So, so you mentioned uh, you use right. C++ and... Can you can you use both Windows, yeah. Mac, uh, or, or Linux, or, or there is a platform which works better? I don't know. For the hackathon, they provided a Docker image which um, allowed you to, which had all the tools um, installed, and I believe. They said that it didn't really work very well on Windows, and I wasn't sure if that was because it not work, or if it was because um, their command line tools don't work very well on Windows. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I have to look into it, but I think possibly it can work well on Windows. I was using Mac for um, a bit of online. Okay, okay. So, so you're using Mac, and and yeah, I mean, I. I always felt like that was a weird choice of the US blockchain to have picked C++ as a language for smart contract because in general you uh like like with those low level language there, there are more possibility more more risk for uh for security uh it doesn't seem as as safe as a higher level language where you are limited by by the virtual machine of of the language so did you have a chance to to talk about this with the EOS guys, or what, what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I I didn't bring it up, but I heard somebody ask that question. Kathan. They said, you know, why are we why why is there only a transpiler for C plus plus? Why don't you support JavaScript or you know, some other languages? Because not many people are familiar with C plus. They didn't really bring up security issues, but they said, you know, developer communities aren't familiar with it. And the answer that came back was a bit interesting. They said, you know, they want EOS to be a highly performant um, blockchain, and C++ code runs really fast, so they, they kind of want you to write C++. But the interesting thing about that is, you know, plus EOS is running WebAssembly, right? Mm -hmm. So surely, you know, it's the job of your transpiler to make the code that you're outputting efficient, right? So you could write it in JavaScript, and you know, potentially that's inefficient. But it's not running JavaScript; it will be running WebAssembly. So, uh, that's right to the answer. But yeah, so, so, really so, so, so yeah, so basically, the, the fact they're using WebAssembly, I think it it weakens the argument that C plus plus is necessary because with JavaScript you can already compile to to, to WebAssembly. And oh, I, actually, probably I, I should have briefly introduced what is WebAssembly because maybe some people don't know. So. So uh, for those of you who don't know what is WebAssembly, it's an effort that started a few years ago by the major web browser vendors, such as uh, so, uh, Google Chrome and, and Mozilla. And basically the idea is to uh, provide a, a, um, a, a compilation target. So, so it's basically a sort of a, an alternative virtual machine for uh, JavaScript, but not only. Uh, so, so the problem was now with web application is for the front end we can only use JavaScript uh, for, for the front end, but it makes a lot of people frustrated because they want to use other languages, 
and and so so with WebAssembly, you'll be able to take different languages and compile them into WebAssembly, and and so this uh, alternative virtual machine will be able to understand this uh, this bytecode, and and will run uh, very efficiently and much more efficiently than that what the JavaScript virtual machine is doing, and so the big difference between EOS and, and Ethereum is that EOS leverage this uh, web assembly effort and it's actually very smart because building a virtual machine takes up a lot of resources and even if they're rich uh, I mean EOS they raise like I think I don't know like like it's not hundred of million or, or one billion I'm not sure but like it's, it was like the biggest uh, ICO in, in history uh, even though they're really rich uh, it's still difficult to compete for for talent uh, like the best engineer they work for for Google for, for for Mozilla and so it's very smart to leverage an effort that is already being done instead of of doing your own virtual machine yeah so that was just apparent this to to introduce um, a web assembly and so okay so so we talk about yeah the, so why what what why they use C++ and then my other question would be uh, how would you rate the the developer experience in terms of the the tools you've you've used what was it easy was it a bit clunky yeah um i think um you know i've worked on lots of different platforms the stuff that's like super mature like ios and android and uh you know web development well, pretty stable and then i've also worked on um Ethereum uh, application. I mean, it's pretty new, right? I mean, it must be the last two, three years. But it actually works pretty well. Um, the EOS, they're not great. Yeah, um, it's, it's not great. There are lots of, we ran into a Yeah, it's not great, but it's also a bit of say because, you know, literally we were working with tools that came out like two weeks before the hackathon. And there's kind of no opportunity, there's no blog posts or anything. So if you got stuck, you either, you know, debug the, the error messages yourself and try to figure it out, or you call someone over to help you, or you post an issue on GitHub. Mm, I, I, I understand. I thought that they're okay. I mean, it, yeah, it more or less works. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say there were any areas where I thought, oh, this is a terrible decision or anything, but, you know, there, there definitely were a lot of problems. And that's probably just because it's early days. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, the big thing when you're trying to build on a platform is it's always easier when there's lots of developers for that platform because people will run into the same issues as you, right? Maybe it's on like a MacBook Pro from 2012. Um, but if you've got a million developers coding on it, you know, somebody will run into the issue before and you can find that. Yeah, yeah. If somebody I, came out two weeks, yeah, you've got to debug yourself, you know? And I also wonder. But it was like more. It was more or less. There. Things worked, but um. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, sorry, I I I cut you. You you were you were saying something. Oh no! I I was just I was just re reiterating like. Yeah. Um. It, it was it was more or less there. Uh, I think it's only going to get better. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. It, and and I also wonder. Um, so, so in the end, which project uh, won the prize? Uh, it was a it was a company that was uh, the, the team. I forget the team name. I think it might have even been of oh, hackathon attendees that are kind of like professional hackathon winners. They kind of travel around and go to a hackathon, and what they produced was a decentralized um, exchange for cryptocurrencies. Which was actually quite interesting because that's what you told me to. Um, so you suggested <laughs> yeah. I work on. Yeah, that's just so before you, you asked me. Idea. Yeah, that was my suggestion. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm sure there were yeah. many projects that are trying to do this, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure because I had to leave the uh, hacking, the um, the ending thing. Okay, so but, so, 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 um, so did, did you guys win something? I, we didn't win anything. Okay. Uh, that's that. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, that's like your first blockchain hackathon. So I mean, I think you were quite courageous to go yeah. there and, and to commit for two days. I mean, that that's really a lot of work. And 
And b beside the, the EOS um, Akaton, a, a last thing I, I like to know is, so, so now you're, you're learning blockchain and I, I suppose you're probably learning more specifically Ethereum, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And, and so how would you describe your experience of uh, learning blockchain programming on, on Ethereum? Like, is it easy to find some, some tutorials, some, some resources? What, what, what do you find difficult in general? Yeah, I, I actually found, I don't know, because I, I, I have been doing Ethereum on it, um, and I've actually found it to be quite easy and quite interesting, so I didn't really run into too many problems. I was working with a, and then I'll be lucky, they got, but that was really good. So I didn't actually go through the official documentation. I went through some guys' um, tutorials on medium.com. Um, the thing that I find most tricky is um, deploying a real app onto it. Because, um, you know, I, I think there are multiple ways to do it, but if you want to do it the most, I guess native way. Steve, from what I've read, I believe you actually need to download the entire blockchain to your local machine and then um, deploy it, deploy your code that way. I think there are alternatives, but that's that's basically the right way to do it. And you know, to do that, I think that's going to require 700 gigabytes of downloading. Okay, um, so 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 uh, so for you, the what's really difficult is deploying to the real blockchain. Yeah, I still haven't done that. I've been, you know, I've been deploying to the simulator blockchain. I've also, um, in the in the process of deploying to uh, what's it called, the some of the test blockchains, about ten gigabytes or so. Um, but I still haven't deployed to a real blockchain, and I think that. Yeah, yeah, that's that that that's a bit scary. I I, I totally understand, and and the big difference with other deployments like like web application deployment is that in the case of blockchain once you deploy you you, you can roll back it's uh it's it's deployed so and also you manipulate money um so yeah if you make a mistake then it's actually similar to the world of um of um hardware so for hardware when, when you develop software for hardware then once it's shipped it's, it's shipped so yeah it better work yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, a Angus. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I. I Angus. I think. I think we we finished uh, all, all the questions. Um, do Do you have anything else to say? <laughs> uh, no, not really. I mean, one thing. It's it's interesting because I, I before I did the EOS hackathon, I read a lot of online about EOS. And I tried to read both sides, like the massive, you know, the people that absolutely hate EOS and, and then also the true believers. Yeah. And the thing is, like, there seems to be extremes on both sides. Like, there's people who hate it and then they say it's just complete nonsense. And then there's people on the other side that are saying, like, oh, this is the way of the future. So, um, I guess doing the hackathon hit me because you got to actually meet the people involved. And they don't seem like you know, they don't seem like wires or anything, but really, who knows? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting area to be in, and it's it's very exciting actually, because I think in the last six months for me, I've been doing a lot of web application development. That like, it changes quite fast, but but conceptually, it's like the web from you know 1994 or whatever, right? It's just yeah, web requests, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, yeah. there's new stuff, but it's still the same core and then you know when you go to blockchain it's like a totally different core you think very separate questions you know like Ethereum has got their blockchain and their version of decentralized apps and then you know these guys go what about if we do it like this what about proof of stake instead of proof of work and all this stuff so it's super interesting um, yeah yeah totally to be a yeah. programmer in this area yeah well I mean it's, it's really refreshing to see like so many people being excited about blockchain and like I mean, I can definitely see like a big influx and in, of people now, and I can probably in a few years like it will be quite different, and and we'll have a, like finally some some distributed application um, that people start to to actually use. Yeah. So uh, 
So Angus, I uh, thank you for for your time and for uh, giving this interview. That was really nice of you to uh, to be there and and tell us your your thought about your your experience uh, for this hackathon and then also as as a blockchain dev and and. And it's time for me to uh, to conclude this episode and thank you guys who are watching us and if you like this video please give me a like or, or you can also subscribe and I hope to see you in the next videos and bye everyone bye bye